Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm back at the auction yard and you guessed it, we're doing another episode of auction car hunting. But I want to give you guys a little bit of insight before we start getting into the video. Now it's a little strange this week because the auction yard is actually pretty empty. And I think this is a sign of the economic times as to what's happening. I think there is an influx of cars that are going for way more than they should. And there's also a lack of vehicles that are currently in supply. So I don't know how long this is going to last, but for the past couple of weeks, I feel like it was just chalked full. There's even like these sublots where they typically don't allow uh, bidders to go look at vehicles because they're going to be slotting them up for the next week. But they opened it up to the public at this particular one that I'm at. And it was just crazy the amount of cars. And it was a great opportunity for me to start checking things out because as you've recently have known, I have actually uh, sold my Subaru Impreza, the battle wagon. And I also sold my E36, my little 318i. So that one is gone as well. So I'm at the point where I'm actually on the hunt for a new project car. I want to be pretty patient about it. I'm under no rush, but you know, I want to be able to provide you guys with more content. I don't know if I want another BMW if I'm being honest with you, cause man, that thing, that E36 man was a headache. I'm going to be completely honest with you. It was brilliant when it worked. Even the little four cylinder is my daily, you know, for quite some time. But eventually it started giving me issues where I think the engine was just getting really worn out. You know, 270,000 miles wasn't treated the best. I tried my best to remedy it as much as I can. Oil pressure light coming on when the, the oil started to get very viscous. I changed it out. I put some oil stabilizer but the top end of the engine just wasn't getting any lubrication. So it was leading to valve ticking and it, it's a whole story. But anyways, I, I sold it to these kids. I, I don't know what they're gonna do with it. Maybe hack it up, turn it into a drift car because the chassis alone was actually really nice uh, for somebody just to swap another engine in it or hell, maybe even try and fix it. But just the high mileage, the fact that it's rebuilt title, it doesn't really hold that much value. And I just didn't, I couldn't really justify the amount of money I would have to throw at it to keep it on the road. So I decided to let it go. Um, it would be nice to get something more reliable this time around. <laughs> so that I just have like less of a headache. But uh, before we get into the video, I did want to make one quick announcement about my Patreon. So on the Patreon, what you get is you get early access to future content that I post on here. And you also get access to our exclusive Discord server, which I'll make sure to link all this stuff down below. But it's just a really cool opportunity for me to connect with you guys on a deeper level and then for me to be able to keep the channel going. So all that stuff will be linked down below. But uh, the my little home office this morning is actually a Mercedes E420. And I tried firing it up earlier. This one's actually really clean. I'm like genuinely impressed at how clean this little car is. It's got the old school Sony <laughs> cassette. Uh, what is this? Some sort of receiver? I don't know, maybe one of you guys know, but I really like these old Mercedes as my little home office when I do these intro videos. Couldn't tell you why, but this is a pretty clean one, but uh, I don't think this one is really worth talking about. Not too many horrendous issues with it. So let's go find something that's maybe more of a disaster. You're worried about the shifter. I'm looking at, is that a, is that a homie? <laughs> or is that a meme? Who is that? I don't know. <laughs> He's got the Miller Lite keychain. Wow. Yeah, what a car. It's even got the original Honda stereo. You know what's great is the tires on the back come off a motorcycle. <laughs> I just got so excited about this E46, but unfortunately it already sold. I believe it was on the auction last week and I must have missed it. I, I really didn't see this thing. There's so many cars nowadays. This one just flew right under my radar. This is so sweet though. It's a 325 CI with a manual transmission. The interior is all here. It's in one piece. I feel like this is kind of a rarity for these nowadays. The rag top looks pretty good. I don't see any major holes or anything like that. It came from a US Navy veteran. So maybe like a, you know, older person owned this car, 100% stock. I mean, this is, this is easy, easy acquisition for sure. I would have been super interested. But, you know, just gotta be patient with these things. I'm sure another one's gonna turn up. 
it's not 100% perfect. I mean, there's little trim pieces missing. The, the leather in these tend to crack, but it's not too bad. I do see that there is um, some of this headliner is coming apart. And these tops, for whatever reason, I think they're uh, motor operated. They, be, they can be kind of miserable also. But yeah, man, this is a sweet one. This would have been seriously awesome to pick up. Go through the gears, feels very slick. Yeah, wow. Kind of kicking myself. I would have definitely just bought this thing since I just sold the E36. Check out the engine real quick. This is the body damage. Uh, so we'd need a fender, corner light. This headlight looks okay. This bumper. Oh man, you just pilot some holes, you get a little zip tie, call it good. This is so easy, dog. I haven't had an E46 in years. Yeah, engine looks, well, it's really hard to tell, but uh, for the most part, it looks relatively clean. I don't see any oil leaking. Very common place to see oil leaking down here on these or on the oil filter housing. I think power steering leaking a little bit, but that's also pretty common on these. Yeah. Wow. What a shame. Oh well, I guess we'll move on to the next one. All right, I just found this Volkswagen Vanagon. And from this angle, it doesn't look like much happened to it, but it's when you start to look in the details, it looks like it met its demise by maybe something falling on top of it. And I believe this is a Westie. So for those who don't know, this is uh, the Westphalia tops. So these tops actually go all the way up and it's like a place for you to sleep. Almost turns this into like a small house. And these are really cute, fun little cars. They're a little underpowered and they can be a little finicky, but there's a huge cult-like following for these Vanagons. And there's people that will pay arm and leg to restore these things. And especially here in the States, you can find these for a small fortune for a really clean one. But this one's definitely not clean. It looks like it sustained some huge damage to the, the little pop top itself. And it also looks like the sliding door here doesn't close all the way, which is really a shame. And it looks like also the roof is completely caved in if I'm able to pull this back. Yeah, this one's kind of a mess because it structurally is compromised here. So you have to remember that this is not gonna be a super easy fix for somebody. Maybe you could take the port of power and push it all the way up and maybe bring this back into shape. But if you really wanna do this car some justice, you really wanna take the time to make it look right because it looks like whoever had this before really, really liked it. It's got these really knobby off-road tires. It almost reminds me of those uh, old JDM vans that I used to review back in the day. This is something you can, uh, you know, you don't wanna take it like full rock crawling or anything like that, but you could still have a lot of fun with it. I see that little bits of it are falling apart. Typical VW stuff here. But man, look at the inside of this thing. This is so cool. Check this out. So with the Westies, you get a sink, you get a table. Wow, I wish one of my best friends was here right now, uh, Christian, because he has a Volkswagen bus and I feel like he would just be losing his mind over this thing right now. It's got the stove. Can I take this up? Yep, it's got the stove with the sink. Uh, it looks like a bunch of water is coming in. It must be from the, the roof. Wow. It's all original and it looks like it's in really good shape for what it is. It's got the burners, little drawers here. I mean, look at the little refrigerator. Dude, this thing is so cool. Wow. This is like a time machine. Feels like I'm in the 80s again. Look at the little drawers. Yeah, wow. Four speed manual transmission. God, dude, this thing's a gem. So you got the rear seating back here. And it's funny because in my friend's Volkswagen bus, what we used to do in college is we'd hang out in the driveway in the van. Even though we could have been sitting in the living room, there's something so much more exciting about just like kicking back in one of these things. And it kind of just takes me back to a simpler time. It does have a little bit of the skylight. So this one is pretty well specced out. I'm very curious to know if this thing actually runs got 223,000 miles on the clock. I mean, that's pretty impressive. 
because these little flat four engines, they, they're relatively simple for the most part, but I, I'm not sure about reliability. I'm not gonna hit, sit here and, uh, you know, knock them for anything like that. Now it's got the four speed manual. Let's go through the gears. One, two, three, four. Okay, I, I'm gonna be honest here. That feels like I'm swimming through mud, rowing through the gears on that thing. It is, it is pretty atrocious, but that's, that's half the charm. It does go into reverse though, which is always a good thing. We'll see if it'll fire up. Oh yeah. Listen to that. <laughs> it sounds pretty good. Looks like they put an oil pressure gauge in there. It's building up oil pressure pretty nicely. Look at this thing, man. Oh yeah. Smooth. Very smooth. This thing is cool, man. What? I, I bet whoever had this, they were so devastated. I feel for them, you know? Because this thing is seriously awesome. I'm sure somebody's gonna buy this thing. Without a doubt. I've actually never seen the sticker pricing on a vehicle at an auction. So this is a first for me, but we got a Dodge Charger RT. And they had this thing priced out at almost $42,000. There's no way. Is that actually what these things go for nowadays? I mean, they're pretty nice, but I didn't realize they were going for that much. Now this is a very clean car. And it's pretty obvious that this one was just ready for sale. You know, it, it looks like it's been fully detailed and uh, there's little imperfections on the side of the door and I think that's gonna tell us a little bit more of a story once I start walking around this thing and giving it more of an in-depth look. And if I can't tell from the video if you guys can see it, then maybe you guys can guess what's going on here because the, the whole car is kind of like shifted forward and to the right. Now we're gonna see exactly what's going on here. Now, as you can see right here, the, the tire is popped and the wheel is not sitting in an orientation that it actually should be. It's almost like it's uh, adjusted to the left. And here's where the brute force of the damage happened. This looks like maybe they hit some sort of light pole, lost control of the car. Maybe it was on a test drive. Somebody completely wrecked it and the suspension is collapsed and I can see that the wheel is actually rubbing up against the front bumper so that is a very concerning sign because I think the brute force of the impact pushed this wheel forward so I'm I'm willing to bet that there's something going on with the suspension something got bent which is truly a shame because it is a you know it's a good looking car let's take a look in the inside oh yeah I mean this thing is very clean super clean car Look at that. What a shame. I wonder if it'll fire up. It looks like it's got some juice in the battery. I'm sure this thing runs. I'd be shocked if it doesn't. Looks like a couple people have been in here trying to fire this thing up. It even smells nice in here. <laughs> Easy. Fired right up. Yeah, not bad. It's got the backup camera, it's got all the features. Tires low, of course. I mean, they couldn't even leave a little bit of gas for us. That's totally fine. Looks like everything else in here is operating. I believe this is the strap that people have been saying in the comments on that Dodge Challenger video that actually puts the car in neutral. So I think what a lot of people do is they're able to gain access to this, put the car in neutral, and then roll it onto a bed of a truck, and maybe that's the whole reason why these things get stolen so often. But I mean, this, this is, for somebody to put that back together in the whole front end that has a body shop is willing to take the risk, there's a lot of good parts about this car, really. 
engine silky smooth. Well, at least for a V8 Hemi motor. All right, guys, I just found a Blob Eye STI. And for those that don't know, this is the early 2000s Subaru WRX STI. And when I was a teenager, I would have killed to have one of these. This was like an absolute dream car for me. Now, from a 10 foot glance, this is actually a very handsome looking little car. But when you start getting up close and seeing the details in it, you'll start to see why this thing's here at an auction. Now, right, you're gonna see little things like the faded headlights. I mean, that's a very easy fix. Little trim pieces falling apart. You know, that's to be expected from a car that's, what, over 20 years old now? It's got the Work CR Kais, and I thought that these were reps, but they actually look legit. So that's actually a huge plus. It's also got the STI Brembos. They look like they're very old, but hasn't been messed with too much. The body itself, really, if you think of this as more of like a shell, the shell of it actually looks fantastic. I'm like genuinely impressed at how well it looks. I don't know if it's been resprayed, but it doesn't look like it. This looks like a factory finish. Uh, moisture is getting on the inside of the taillights, but more importantly, moisture is getting in the inside of the entire car. Now, as you see on this windshield, it, the sun's coming at it right now, and you can see that all of this moisture is starting to come up. So it makes you wonder, why is there so much moisture on the inside? Even on the little crevices here, you can see moisture is getting on the inside. So maybe the trunk is just like a lake in the back. But speaking in the back, it's also got Cobb aftermarket exhaust. This is a pretty penny, and these are actually, I actually really want this. That would be really nice to put on my bug eye. Now, I opened the door on this thing and it is foul in here. It smells absolutely horrible. I'm definitely not gonna sit in this one just for my own safety because all of this moisture has created this uh, mildewy, soupy smell. It smells like 20 year old car times 10. Look at the carpet in the back. You see that? That's wet. That is very, very wet. Open up the front door here. Now it does have the six speed manual, but you could look at the, look at the seat. Come on. I mean, this thing has been through the ringer, even the passenger seat. That is not a good sign at all. And you know, I uh, rolling through the gears, I touched it and I was just absolutely disgusted. I tried firing it up for you guys. Does not want to turn over and I just want to get out of this thing. Now for people that don't know, these actually have an intercooler water spray from the factory. Pretty cool. It's also got settings for the center diff. But man, this thing has just been tortured, poor thing. But if you were to buy this as a shell, go through it. A lot of potential, man, a lot of potential. Now I do see some random assortment of screws. That's always a good sign, right? So let's go, let's take a look at the good old EJ257. 2.5 liter turbocharged boxer engine. Legendary. Now, I know everybody in the comments, oh, head gasket this, head gasket that, probably, if, if I'm being honest with you, but it could also be ringland failure or it could be a blown turbo. When I look over in the back here, I do see that it has a Cobb Catalyst downpipe. That's always a plus. Uh, the turbo looks like it's been there forever. I'm sure that's a factory turbo, so it, there's a good possibility it could have a blown turbo. But it doesn't have any crazy modifications. It's even got the recirculating blow-off valve. It's got the stock airbox. I mean, it's it's pretty untouched underneath here, but not in a good way. It looks like it just hasn't had any sort of maintenance done to it. it does have a aftermarket radiator, which is cool, but I don't know. This thing is uh, this thing is nice to look at, but it would be quite a project. So you're kind of rolling the dice, but a lot of this stuff could clean up too. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of torn on this one, you know. I'm gonna see how much it goes for. The thing is though, a blob eye STI, it's gonna go for a lot, trust me. And I even like that it doesn't have the wing. That's like a huge plus too. I love the wingless STI. It looks so uh, under the radar, but maybe you guys can let me know. Yeah.